we're gonna take this photo and make it look like this let's get started hey what's up guys Rule here and as you can see this is the final output to create this go to file and create a new document here size i'm gonna keep it 1800 by 2400 there is no reasoning behind it it just worked out create now i want a black background so i'm simply gonna press ctrl i and it will make it black and white then go to file place embedded and i'm gonna select this photo uh, i'm gonna build up the background first so i'm gonna place this photo right here a little bit something like this and then i'm gonna make it a bit darker so hue saturation and reduce the saturation a bit uh, and then reduce the lightness quite a bit looks pretty good now i'm gonna add a new sky so again place the new sky photo all the links for the images are in the description so you can follow along but again i'm gonna make the sky a little bit bigger put it here like this you can also reduce the opacity just to see how it sits within the photo that looks nice confirm it now i'm gonna make the opacity full and mask out the sky so what i like to do is hold alt key and then click on the mask this way it applies inverted mask now i can get the brush tool and when i paint with white color uh, i can bring back the mask like this sorry bring back the sky looks good uh, it's just too bright so create new and this time i'm gonna select a brightness contrast but i'm gonna clip it uh, and then i'm gonna reduce the brightness to roughly like 100 ish pixel maybe i will make the background even bigger and another thing i want to get rid of this small island here so right click here and rasterize your layer so we can use the uh, tool uh, and then I'm gonna select the round marquee tool and make a small selection like this then shift backspace and here you will select content aware hit ok that's gone Control D to remove the selection uh, and then uh, do the same for this one that's done now another thing i'm gonna create new adjustment layer and select curves and in the curves i'm gonna first of all make everything a bit darker and then i'm gonna go to my red and add a bunch of cyan the background is ready uh, and we can group this so hold your shift key and select all of this Control g uh, and let's name it background now let's do the foreground so file place and i'm going to select this foreground photo that i found place it here confirm now i'm going to right click and rasterize this layer so again i want to use the content aware so make a selection to remove this gutter shift backspace and then hit ok remove the selection uh, and now we need to remove the top part uh, so I'm do gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna hold my alt key and apply the mask Then get a brush tool with white color and then paint it back Once you have the mask another thing you can do is unlink it select the photo Get your move tool and now you can move around the photo without ruining the mask I can even make it bigger or smaller and the mask will stay in the place Now let's color correct the foreground. So again hue saturation clip it uh, and let's make it a bit darker this time again now i'm going to select color balance so in the mid tone i'm going to add a first of all i'm going to clip it uh, then i'm going to add a bunch of yellow and then i'm going to add a bunch of red so we have some really nice contrast for the final adjustment select curves clip it and make it dark no rocket science just simply make it a little bit dark and in doing so i realized i forgot actually one step so in the background i actually also did color balance thing so I'm, i can just simply go back here and on top of my curves i will create a new color balance layer and in mid-tone i'm gonna add a little bit of a blue and a little bit of cyan so we can create some nice contrast looks lovely uh, and close it now back to the foreground uh, we're working on that 
So for the final step in the foreground, as you can see, there's like a bit of a strong highlight that I don't want here. And to fix it, I'm gonna create new blank layer. I'm gonna right click and create a clipping mask. So it stays in the uh, foreground. Then what you do, you get a soft uh, brush and pick up a dark color from the foreground, something like this. And then you can paint it on top. Then change the blend mode of this to overlay. As you can see, it dulls out the lighting a little bit and then you can reduce the opacity so it blends a bit more. Also, I can just go to my color balance and make it actually a bit more red because I want like that nice orange tone. Perfect, foreground is done, we can group it. Select this, hold shift key, select everything, control G and let's name it to foreground. Now the fun stuff starts. Uh, let's make the door, uh, create new blank layer and name it door. And I'm gonna select the rectangular marquee tool and make a rectangular uh, shape roughly the size of the door. You can make it bigger or smaller later. So I'm gonna make the door like this. Then you right click and select stroke. Size here completely depends on the size of your document. For me, 15 pixel on the center works perfect. I'm gonna make the color white and then hit okay and okay. Control D. Now to make sure that the door is in center, you can just simply hit, uh, first remove the selection of the door, then press Control A. So the entire frame is selected. Select your move tool and then select this second button and this second button here in the middle. So this way you can make sure the door is in complete center. Control D to remove the selection. And now I'm gonna hold my shift key and then drag the door down a little bit. You can also use your arrow keys by the way uh, to bring it down. Let's make it a bit smaller. Now I'm gonna add some glow to the door. So double click here and in your layer style, select outer glow. In the outer glow, the size is way too strong right now. So I'm gonna reduce the size a little bit until we get the desired fade. And in the color, I'm gonna make it a bit more yellowish because right now it's a bit too orange. And then hit okay. If anything happens, we can go back and change the glow. So don't stress over this thing. Now let's make uh, the reflection on the ground. Uh, for that, control J to make a copy and take this copy, put this under your door and rename it uh, reflection then take this and put it under just like this now change the opacity of this layer to something like 15 percent then make a copy and this time make the opacity 100 and change the blend mode to linear dodge uh, linear dodge add now go to your filter blur and gaussian blur and add a bit of a blur it okay. Now to sell this reflection, we need to blend it. And for that, I'm gonna double click again on my layer. And do you see this blend if option? So hold your Alt key and then drag it to the right. And it will start blending things in. Uh, if you want more, just keep dragging all the sliders <laughs> left and right. Hit okay. Now I'm gonna make copy of this. So Control J and then change the opacity of this to 50%. So it's not that strong and blur it even more. So go to filter, blur and Gaussian blur. Uh, apply even more blur so it's nice and soft and you have your crispy reflection. Now, uh, I think uh, this is still a bit too big, the size of door. So let's just group everything. I'm gonna select the door, hold shift, select everything, control G and we can name it door. And now we can control T on everything and make it small. Now we can finally add the model. And for that, go to filter, place embedded, select photo of this astronaut and place it. Problem with this photo is that none of the quick selection or auto selection tools work. You will have to select pen tool and go manually step by step and do it like this. It sucks and it takes a lot of time. So I'm just gonna skip it in the editing and use the PNG that I already have. So three, two, one, there. So the background is gone and I'm gonna actually also flip the photo. So control T, right click and flip horizontal and gonna rotate it a little bit. 
wait i completely forgot one of the step uh you know what let's hide this layer for now so the door is not complete we need to add those uh, sci-fi curtains that i like to call and they're actually super easy to do uh, go to file uh, place embedded and uh, download this photo of the um, light trails so i'm gonna select my lasso tool uh, and make selection of this lights like this so you have the selection uh, make sure you have the layer active then control J so I have this copy already right as you can see on a separate layer we don't need the original one we can delete this then take this uh, and change the blend mode of this to screen rotate it and make it small wait I'm also gonna flip it horizontally because I want this transparent side inward and now it's just simple adjusting so you can use your uh, warp tool to warp stuff around so this is how i created the door and rest is just simply group it so i'm gonna group it and let's name it space curtains <laughs> Uh, and then you can do adjustments on it so I can use hue saturation and clip it on the door and now I can change the color to match it like the more yellow tone of the scene so as you can see now it looks a lot nicer on plus 35 now let's let's go back to the model uh, and we need to make him a bit more smaller to match the model with the background first create new adjustment and select curves just like every time clip it and make it a little bit darker then create another adjustment and this time color balance clip it and in every tone just add a bit of yellow so i'm gonna make this one bit yellow this one bit yellow and this one a bit yellow here uh, and now comes the painting part which is not about the trick but it's more about the skill so create new adjustment, uh, hue saturation, clip it and make everything dark. And close it. Now what you do is basically you get a soft uh, brush uh, and with black color you erase it from the part where you want to show the highlights. Another thing I did was create new layer, uh, another adjustment and clip it and change the brightness even further a little bit. Then create a new blank layer. Now this is a trick, uh, as you can see here, the yellow color is not very visible because of the lighting in original photo. So what you can do is you can just pick like a yellowish color from the background. Um, doesn't have to be accurate and you can change it later, maybe even from his hand or something like this. Okay, so that tone is pretty good. Now change the blend mode of this layer to linear dodge or color dodge, whatever works. And when you paint, as you can see, now you can add some extra orangish color on top. It's a bit too orange, so we're gonna push it more on the yellower side. Okay, that looks nice. Now clip it, obviously, and change the opacity to something like 50%. And now you can simply just paint uh, on top of this to give it more of a yellow highlight look because uh, in the original photo the lighting doesn't make it look yellow so you can just do it with this and for the last part uh, I created another blank layer and this time I used black color with again like a low opacity uh, and I painted a little bit on the front here okay it's still not low enough but I painted a little bit in the front here because I wanted this portion to be a bit darker, especially when we add the cast shadow, this will help a lot. Now let's add the cast shadow. For that, activate your model layer, hold your control key, and create uh, a new layer. So this will create a layer under your model. Then get your brush tool, make sure opacity is actually full with a completely soft brush. And then you can just manually paint a shadow, something like this. 
Now this again takes a bit of a practice. Now one thing that you can do is erase this uh, little bit of shadow. So get eraser tool and when you erase it from here, it kind of makes it look like, you know, the both leg are, uh, legs are separated. And to finally sell this effect, you can use mask, eraser, whatever. So this time let's do mask, cause why not? And apply a mask. And basically what you do is you reduce your opacity of the brush, like keep it like 50-ish percent. Then you make your brush big and then you erase a little bit of shadow from the front. It's maybe not scientifically accurate, I don't know, but it works, makes it look aesthetically pleasing. And that's what I care. Also, I think in the hue saturation, I'm gonna make it even a bit more darker so we can create the contrast really nice. Perfect. Now for the overall color correction, create a new color balance on top of everything. Don't clip it. Uh, in the midtones, add a bunch of yellow, something like this. And then in the highlights, again, add a bunch of yellow. Now what you can see is that because we added this like heavy amount of yellow, the scene became a bit more darker than we wanted. To fix it, add final adjustment layer, which will be curves and make everything slightly brighter. And I'm also gonna go back to my curves and in the highlights, uh, actually let's reduce the yellows a bit and add more red. So we can have that night nice teal and orange combination so a little bit of a red uh, maybe a little bit of yellow so that's it this is how i transformed a regular photo into sci-fi art piece i hope you learned something from this video and if you want to check out i have more stuff on my channel i'll see you next time till then goodbye take care and have some fun with photoshop